is up everyone welcome back to a brand new video on the channel now i know what you're thinking why the microphone what's this baloney that i'm doing here well my snowball white has decided to completely stop working entirely so now i'm practically jimmy conrad using the microphone here to now record my voice and actually it does look quite professional i won't lie i forgot i had this this was all the way back when i used to play guitar hero and all of that so thanks to this you've got a video today before i move on to the main point of the video which is the big transfers we've just had announced in the championship i've got a bit of an announcement to make my birthday is coming up very very soon tuesday is when i'll turn well, I won't say, um, but I've got a special gift for you guys for supporting me all this time. 226 subscribers now, couldn't ask for a better start. Obviously, 1,000 subscribers is the target, but 226 is a good position at the moment. So what's the reward? I'm opening a Discord server for championship fans worldwide. The link is on the screen right now. It's open to a day, so you better get joining quickly. But hang on a minute. What if you saw this video a day late and you've missed it? Well, no worries. Just leave a comment saying if you want to join. And if you do want to join, I'll resend you a new link and you'll have 24 hours to join the server using this new link. So anyone who's seen this video after a day, don't worry, you won't be missing out. But as always, if you guys like what you see, please make sure you do give this video a like. It's tremendously appreciated. If you're new around here, please subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps. We want to try and get to a thousand subscribers as soon as we can. So I could do this collaboration with Ben HD and hopefully I might not need to use this again. But either way, it makes me look quite professional as I'll say again and please share the channel if you can to another youtuber to your social medias either or it would really make my day if you guys want a shout out actually showing you subscribe to the channel and have shared my video if you send me a screenshot to either my social medias they're always in the description down below I've got Twitter and Instagram then your screenshot will be included in the next video and your name will be shouted out so if you do want a shout out that is how you have to do it but without any further ado we've got some big deals to go through let's go through the recent championship news so we'll go through the done deal so far i think the biggest news today was eberechi eze finally joining a premier league side he has left queen's park rangers to join crystal palace a fee that will rise up to 20 million crystal palace have already had two bids rejected by queen's park rangers they had an 8 million pound bid and a 12 million pound bid both rejected by Queen's Park Rangers and think rightly so definitely needed to be at least 16 million and the fee was actually 16 million plus 4 million add-ons. Queen's Park Rangers have a 20% sell-on clause with the agreement which I think is good for Queen's Park Rangers that they've done that. A really good signing for Crystal Palace. This could be imminent that Willifred Sahar is probably going to be leaving. I think Eze is going to be acting as his replacement even though he is more of an attacking midfielder and he doesn't play as a winger but he is a very versatile player Eze so I think it will be a very good fit for Crystal Palace. Definitely giving me more hope of Crystal Palace's season now. Two really recent signings. Mason Bennett has now rejoined Millwall on a permanent basis. And Scott Malone, a fullback from Derby, has also joined Millwall on a season-long loan. Millwall are making some moves in this transfer window, I do have to say. They will definitely be around top 10 for me. I'll be very surprised if I ever drop off following the signings they've made so far. I am a big fan of all of their signings so far. I am really excited to see what Millwall has in store with them. Of course, Gary Rowe is going to know about Scott Malone and Bennett after working with them with Derby County. Two really good signings for Millwall. And then once that have happened in the past couple of days, Jordi Asai Tutu has joined from Arsenal and under-23s to Cardiff. He's a right back. He's had two goals and two assists in his 29 appearances in the second Premier League division. It's a good signing. I think it really strengthens the options along with Callum Patterson and Bakuna, who can also play in that position. Matt Clark, Derby have now got him back from Brighton. They've now got him back on another season long loan. They managed to get him off Brighton after Brighton made a signing for Matt Clark for Portsmouth last year. They got him on a loan last year and now they've got him on another loan this year. He's played 39 times for Derby this season being one of Derby's best centre-backs for me. Thomas Kaminsky of Ghent has now joined Blackburn. I assume he'll be Blackburn's number one goalkeeper following Christian Wharton has now left following the end of his loan. They've got him for 450000 which I think is alright. He has won trophies and most recently he's won the Danish Cup with FC Copenhagen in 2017. But he's also won the Belgium division twice with Anderlecht. And obviously in the summer he's joined Belgium rivals Ghent. He managed to get 67 appearances with 15 clean sheets. If you calculate a clean sheet rate percentage, that is 22.4%. To put in perspective of Blackburn's clean sheet record last season with Christian Walton, he achieved 26% with 12 clean sheets in 46. So pretty similar statistics, although 
Kaminsky is falling off par a little bit in terms of Christian Wharton's statistics last year. He's going to have to step up, but he said it was his dream to play for England, so maybe it'll be a good signing for Blackburn. Lotsuke Forrest are completed the signing of Furad Bashiru, age 30. The average age of all of their signings so far is 29. Clearly, Sabri Lamucci is going for experience over youth, actually. And I think all of these signs will be very short-term, but I think it's an intent that Lotsuke Forrest really want to go for the championship this year. And I think it's a really positive signing. He's recently played for Malmo in the Europa League. He scored one goal and two assists in the qualifying rounds. He's also won the Swedish Cup after Ostersunds, managing under now Brighton manager Graham Potter. He's a defensive midfielder, so he'll complement the positions of Sam Basso and Jack Colback. I'm really happy with Nottingham Forest at the moment, strengthening the depth and their options, which I think is really, really key for Nottingham Forest with a 46-game season. Norwich have had two departures. Daniel Ashdead has left to join Telstar. Same goes to Sebastian. Sebastian Soto, they've both left to join Telstar, who play in the second division of the Dutch league. Mark Uwe has now rejoined Swansea, who had signed a loan from Chelsea in January. He's only 20 years old, honestly one of the exciting centre-backs, and actually a centre-back I would not have mind seeing in Chelsea actually, following how good he was with Swansea, but it looks like Frank Lampard is making other moves for other centre-back options that have probably played in more European competition so definitely more European minded centre backs so I think a move to Swansea for Mark Gouet is definitely a really suitable option for him and whilst they managed to get Mark Gouet back Swansea were also busy yesterday capturing Jamal Lowe that's right now looking at the clubs he's played for he reminds me of Jamie Vardy a little bit so I'll call him the championship Jamie Vardy he started out with Long League with Barnet passed around in Bourne Wood St Aldens Hampton and Richmond eventually Portsmouth where he got his big break and his breakout season then Wigan captured in obviously Paul Cook working with him so he knows what Jamal Lowe is all about but unfortunately due to Regan's relegation and their financial crisis at the moment he has now joined Swansea and I think a really good option I do fear he may not be starting every single game because he is technically fighting Andre Ayew for that right midfielder position so it'll be interesting you know if Swansea have the options that they can just bring on Jamal Lowe from the bench Swansea could be scary next season. Leo Ostergaard has joined Coventry on the loan from Brighton. He's not made a senior appearance for the Seagulls, but he spent his last season in Bundesliga 2 playing for FC St. Pauli, scoring one goal in his 28 appearances. Birmingham have been a little bit busy. They've signed Ivan Sanchez. He left Elche CF, which if you follow La Liga, they earned promotion back to La Liga in the first time in five years, beating Girona in the second division playoff final. Fran Villabra has now rejoined Udi Almeria on another season-long loan. And following with Luton, they've let go of Donovan Daniels, who has now joined Crew Alexandra of League One. But that's all the done deals as of now. I mean, whilst I start editing this video, there's probably going to be even more deals taking place, which is how fast-paced the championship is. But as of this recording, these are all the completed deals in the moment. But without any further ado, now let's go through to the juicy part of the video, the transfer rumours. So, Ollie Watkins definitely has got to be in the transfer rumours. Now, Aston Villa, I think, are the firm favourites to sign. But Fulham, Crystal Palace and Sheffield United are interested. But following up Palace have just got Eze, maybe they're not quite in the race. So I'm definitely looking at Villa, Fulham and Sheffield United definitely being the three more likely teams to get them. I think Villa definitely edging themselves in front with Dean Smith as a manager. He's worked with Ollie Watkins before and he definitely knows about his versatilities. Brentford would want to fee roughly around 25 million, which I think does make sense with his goal scoring form this season. You know, he scored 26 goals. I unbelievable striker and the championship player of the year so definitely he'll be up for a big price as the Villa definitely in front but they do not want a bidding war with Fulham because keep in mind Fulham have now got promoted via the playoff final so they've got a huge money war chest to try and compete with signings so definitely if Brentford do not agree with Villa's bid Fulham can easily go in and just hijack the deal and that is what Villa do not want so Villa have got to be very very careful I definitely still think Villa could be the favourites to get him, but they definitely do not want to have a bidding war. Luke Freeman is another name I've been seeing in the news. Nottingham Forest Forrest look like that they want to try and get him on a loan deal. He's 28 years old, so it does make sense to have the older, more experienced and seasoned players for Nottingham Forest. It's 
going to make sense with their transfer policy is just Sheffield United just never got his big break. He only made three starts, eight substitute appearances, didn't score a goal. I mean, when you compare his stats with Queen's Park Rangers, where he had double figures in assists, you know, he definitely didn't have as much of an impact to Sheffield Wednesday that probably a lot of people thought he would. I think a lone move back to the championship and with a side like Nottingham Forest, I think it could definitely suit him. Ben Davies is another name I've been seeing on the news today. It looks like Celtic may want to try and get a new centre-back following that age following Celtic's um, failure to qualify for the Champions League. They may lose him. But Celtic's replacement is looking like to be, at the moment, Ben Davies of Preston. He made 36 appearances for Preston last year. Definitely one of the best centre-backs at Preston. I think his partnership with Patrick Bauer did click very, very well for Preston. Definitely can see this signing happen if Celtic offer a good money price. But Preston, I think, will be definitely holding firm. I mean, they've already done deals with Celtic with Preston against Scott Sinclair from Celtic. So maybe they both of these sides have got a really good relationship. So it'll be interesting. But going back to Preston, Josh Harrop, actually, I forgot to mention this. He has signed a three-year deal with Preston. Preston fans will be very, very happy with that. A very good impact player. But I hoped he just started more games. And I think he will start more games this season more than any other season and if he can you know maybe Preston could have a really really good start under him but now back to the rumors we cannot have a transfer rumor if we do not talk about Matty Cash Aston Villa West Ham and Fulham look to be the three favorites to sign but according to reports Fulham are apparently the favorites probably because as I said the war chest that they have from getting promoted via the playoffs but you may remember in January Sheffield United tried to go for Matty Cash they had a bid turned down though and I think the fee we've estimated is going to be around 15 million. So I could definitely see Fulham affording that. It's just whether they want to definitely go for it because they could definitely strengthen their fullback options. West Ham, I could definitely see trying to go for him maybe as a replacement for Fredericks, who's struggled at West Ham quite recently. Villa, you could look at the likes of Elmer Hamadi, who's getting a bit older. So maybe they could look at Matty Cash as a replacement there. Can definitely see Matty Cash working for all three of these sizes. It's going to be interesting. It's just going to depend which one of these three sizes is going to want him more. Now we've got our Bournemouth players. Ryan Fraser left Bournemouth when his contract ended in June the 30th. I've been hearing that West Ham and Crystal Palace are the two teams interested and offering 50k a week contracts. I mean, I'm sorry, but with the attitude that he had just to walk out on the club when they were in a relegation battle, I mean, I know Lyle Taylor did something very similar with Charlton, but... I don't care if he doesn't want to get injured, risking that he won't be signed for a bigger club. You stay to your club to help them avoid relegation. The fact he just walked out like that and he's one of Bournemouth's most creative players with an attitude like that, I don't think he deserves 50k a week personally. Yes, you cannot go wrong. He's one of the best wide players out there, but his attitude just stank in the end of Bournemouth's campaign. Now we go to Callum Wilson. Obviously, there'll be so much interest following him. He's had a pretty up and down season. Bournemouth's form really deteriorated when Callum Wilson was injured and just struggled to get back scoring again. When Callum Wilson and scores Bournemouth are good now it looks like West Ham Fulham Everton and Spurs are the four teams interested with Callum Wilson Bournemouth I think are going to demand roughly 30 million for the striker there was definitely bids talking around 50 million at the time but following his relegation down to the championship I think that price is going to have to be lowered now so definitely he can definitely be more attainable by those clubs now I know Chelsea were linked with him for a time but I don't think we were willing to play 50 million but undoubtedly Callum Wilson will be one of the best strikers in the championship if he does stay at Bournemouth but if I'm going to be honest with all that interest I think he will leave for one of these clubs eventually in around I don't know 25 million plus 5 million add-ons I'm predicting the deal will be but 30 million, I think, is a reasonable price for Callum Wilson for what he can offer. You know, you've seen what he's like in the England squad as well. Another high profile player in a recently relegated club is Watford with Abdu Ducore. Now, it looks like with all the reports that Everton were the really strong favourites to sign him, he's rejected interest from Wolves, Fulham, Hertha Berlin to join Everton. However, some other reports are saying that Monaco are almost preparing to hijack the bid and go for a bid of 25 million which I think is quite a good offer actually so right now I think it's going to be a two horse race between Everton and Monaco for Abdou Decore. I could definitely see him being managed in the Premier League because I think he'll be excited with the concept of working under Carlo Ancelotti. Another key name in the transfer rumours is Ivan Tony. Now there's so many different reports saying 
different things. Now, Ivan Tony, you may know the story of Ivan Tony so far. Brentford looked like they signed him, but then it looked like Premier League clubs expressed interest, and Ivan Tony has said that his dreams to play for a Premier League club. So then it looked like a Premier League club were getting. Then those options kind of cooled down a little bit, and it looks like Brentford are now for favourites to sign him again. And if I'm going to be honest, a move to Brentford, I think it will be a really good time for Tony to move to Brentford. They'll be one for favourites to get promoted, and he'll be a huge contribution to their promotion. You know, either way, a step up from League One, I think, is what Ivan Tony wants. I know. Brentford previously bidded 5 mil for Ivan Tony, but it was rejected. I do think Ivan Tony's going to leave though, because you may know Peterborough have now got an agreement for Johnson Clark Harris, the Bristol Rovers striker who scored 16 times in 32 appearances in all competition, which is the goal per two games, which actually is a really good conversion rate. Who knows where Ivan Tony's going to go personally, but I do think Brentford are going to be the team to get him because they cannot risk losing Ollie Watkins and not replacing and I think Ivan Tony will be a good replacement. Got a couple more players left. Adam Clayton's a name that I saw recently. Birmingham City are interested. He was in the Middlesbrough squad who gained promotion to the Premier League in 2016 who was managed by you guessed it, Ita Karanka. I can see this transfer falling through actually. He's not played in Middlesbrough since 2019. He's 31 years old, so I think he'll be a short-term option. But of course, he knows Karanka very, very well. And it looks like Karanka has expressed a load of interest in getting him back. Will be interesting, you know, maybe he won't be match fit for not playing football practically the whole of last season. But a good midfielder option for Birmingham. Definitely strengthening the depth in their squad is going to be key for Birmingham's success this season. Now we go to two names I've never really heard of. So now we start off with Corrad Adidorin. Sheffield Wednesday are interested in signing the free agent, leaving Everton. He has played in a Scottish Premiership before with Hamilton. He's a centre-back who could bolster Sheffield Wednesday's back line, but he's still a very young prospect. So, Sheffield Wednesday have got an interesting decision. Do they want to go with youth or do they want to go for a more experienced back line? Could definitely be a good option for definitely in the cup competitions, in my opinion. And the last name to go through is, I'm going to really butcher his name, Dimitris Giannoulis. <laughs> I've never, ever heard of him, but he has played for Pauk, which is a team I have heard of because Chelsea have played against them in the past two years. Is. Watford and Newcastle are interested in signing him. He's a left back. Newcastle are believed to have made a 4 million bid for him already, which is his valuation. So we could find that he may be going to Newcastle, but Watford can definitely try and step up and they can definitely afford that. And I think it'll be interesting to get him to fill the void of Jose Holabas, who's also a Greek left back, but he's now left to join Olympiacos. So definitely could be a good left back option for Watford to have. But that's all the transfers talked about and done. If you guys love to see want to see more championship concept, please make sure you do give this video a like. It's tremendously appreciated. If you haven't done, please subscribe to the channel. We want to get to a thousand subscribers as soon as you can so i could do a collaboration with mr championship ben hd all of that really, really make my day if you guys want to join my discord the link is on the screen but it's also in the description down below as well if you can please share the channel it would really really make my day but for me and my microphone thank you guys so much for watching you guys are legendary you saw the end of this video and as always take care